Today, you pretty much seen a flash crash in our markets. Now, what happened today? I think that's what everyone wants to know because on face value, sure, the Fed was a little bit more hawkish than what they've usually been, but you didn't really have anything that new. Again, on face value. I will share with you why the markets actually sold off today, what to be watching for tomorrow, and how this could have totally changed the market's perception. It seems like everyone has been very bullish recently, and in fact, today could be the start of a new trend. With that said, Tesla's stock was up about 5% at one point today, although the markets sold off big time. The Nasdaq up 1%, ended up closing down about 1.5%, a huge 2.5% round move. Tesla still managed to stay positive by a little bit over 1.5% today. That did show a lot of strength, and I will discuss what I think is coming ahead for Tesla stock specifically. But first things first, before we get into all of that juicy information, hit that like button as well as subscribe to the channel, and most importantly, let me know what you think about this down below in the comment section. Are we heading into a deeper correction, or is this just a one-and-done flash crash event? So there were two main reasons why stocks sold off today, one of which was the Fed, and the other were geopolitical tensions. I will share with you what I think is most important, but let's start with the Fed and what these Fed officials said today. Fed Kashgari was the most hawkish out of all three Fed officials that we heard from today, and this is one of the quotes that really started this sell-off in the markets. Fed Kashkari said, it's possible the Fed won't cut this year if inflation stalls. That's actually pretty interesting because just yesterday we had prices paid in the service sector of the economy and that came in well below estimates about five points lower than any estimate on wall street and that was actually the lowest that number has come in since late 2022 so there are actually signs that maybe the january and february inflationary pressures that we have seen recently maybe they are not to use this term everyone hates but transitory but nonetheless, that was really the first comment that started this downward slide in the markets. Fed Kashkari also says it's a question of why cut rates if the economy remains strong. And he has a good point there. But again, if you typically go into a recession, it happens quickly. It's usually not a trickle into a recession. It's usually like a slight trickle down. Something happens. Boom cratering in economic activity. So I guess that would be the argument to not not cut rates because if you wait too long then you're going to do a lot of unneeded damage to the economy. Overall though, these two statements from Cat from Fed Kashkari today really caught the markets a little bit by surprise because we all know the Fed's not going to cut rates, you know, three times. That's Probably unlikely unless we really start to get some disinflationary progress that starts to happen. I think most of Wall Street expects one to two rate cuts in 2024, but Fed Kashkari throwing out there that we may not get a rate cut at all, that's a little problematic. The markets are pricing in three rate cuts, but if you're not going to be cutting rates at all, that's the next step to raising rates is going from seven rate cuts down to three to maybe no rate cuts and then you start to throw in there maybe we should raise rates again and i think that's kind of why the markets had a little bit of a palpitation today upon these comments but it wasn't just fed kashkari that spooked the markets at the same exact time you were hearing from fed mester and he says my long-term neutral estimate was raised to three percent from 2.5 percent in last month's summary of economic projections so this is basically the neutral rate so if he thinks the neutral rate went up by half of one percent that means you're likely not going back down to any form of loose fed policy anytime soon and then you had fed goalsby at the same time as fed mester and fed kashkari he says in march i jotted down two rate cuts this year but if inflation continues to move sideways makes me wonder if we should cut rates at all this year so another fed official saying maybe we shouldn't cut rates this year that's not great i will also point out that a lot of the time the fed 
and the, the governors of the Fed will get data reports a day or two before they are released to the public. Tomorrow, we get the unemployment rate and the non-farm payroll report. And judging off of what the Fed officials said today is... Maybe those numbers are going to come in really hot tomorrow. So the Fed was the first reason why markets sold off, but I actually think the most important reason why the markets sold off had nothing to do with the Fed, but actually geopolitical tensions. Recently, as you know, is or maybe you don't know and you're learning here today, Israel bombed the Iranian embassy in Syria, killing the highest military official since we ordered that strike on Soleimani, President Trump at the time did back in 2020, that killed Soleimani. And this is the the worst, I guess, death in the military by an outsized, outside military force since 2020. What happened then in 2020 was Iran fired a bunch of missiles at U.S. bases in Syria and Iraq. <laughs> It's kind of funny, though, because Iran called up the U.S. and said, hey, we have to show our people we're going to do something, but move your people into bunkers. We're just going to hit like right outside the base. So it was kind of like a, a, a tit for tat. They didn't do any damage back then. It kind of washed over. Israel doing this? Maybe that leads to a larger reaction. In fact, Iran vows retaliation on Israel after commander's death, raising fears of a war spiraling and apparently speculation suggests that iran could attack israel from its own territory rather than through proxies sparking wider hostilities that is according to the idf in fact the idf the israeli defense force said on wednesday that it bolstered its air defense array and had called up reservists as the country geared for a potential iranian response to the strike in syria earlier this week in which several high-ranking iranian military officials were killed now all all of this geopolitical tensions, if you will, it really came to a head today based on what Biden said about Israel. Biden told Netanyahu to protect civilians in Gaza or the U.S. policy will change. We didn't get much clarity in that. What that means, the U.S. basically said in the press sec in the, the statement today, right, the 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 where they get on the podium, the press conference and uh, said we're still going to have Israel's back, but things might change. So we have no idea what that means, but it doesn't sound good considering Iran's probably going to launch some missiles at Israel soon. Now, specifically why I think this affected the markets big time today is what you've seen move. So you've seen some very particular movements in the bond market, in the gold markets, in oil markets that leads me to believe the markets really didn't react much off of what the Fed said. It was more on these geopolitical tensions. And really, reason number one for this, that, that, that kind of gives it away if you know anything about how markets move or, or what, you know, what things mean, okay? TLT is the ETF that tracks the 20-year treasury. It's good for the 10-year, 30-year treasury as well. Really long-duration treasuries. Well... Typically, when the Fed says things like they're not going to be cutting rates or expect less rate cuts, hawkish things overall, 10-year Treasury yields tend to rise. Now, if, if, if you think about yields, when this chart rises, when, the, bo when the, the bond prices go up, when people buy bonds, that means the yields fall, kind of like a dividend stock. If you buy a $100 dividend stock that pays you $5 a year, that is a 5% yielding dividend stock. If everyone wants to own that stock now and it goes to $200 and you still get paid out $5 a year, now it's a 2.5% yielding dividend stock. So when TLT's chart goes up, that actually means long duration bonds sold off. Judging off what the Fed said today, you should have seen this chart actually fall. You should have seen TLT fall, not rise. And, in, and it's interesting. Once the market started to rally, when these geopolitical um, headlines started to come out from the Biden administration, you actually seen investors go buy TLT, which is a rush to safety kind of reaction. You can see back in the early days of the Roni Rona, what happened? People are like, I don't want to old own commodities. I don't want to own stocks. If markets are about to crash, if things are about to hit the fan, I want 
U.S. Treasuries, because if anything, U.S. Treasuries are probably going to go up in value because everyone's going to rush to U.S. Treasuries. So you get these big spikes or just inflows of capital to Treasuries, sometimes based on fear moves. And when it's based on a fear move like you've seen today, it's specifically something you want to take note of because you need a lot of money to move TLT. Right. This is not retail investors that are like, oh, buy TLT because there's geopolitical tensions. If anything, it would have made sense to buy puts on TLT because, I mean, the Fed was super hawkish relative to what markets are currently expecting. So this is the telltale giveaway of why the markets did what they did, most importantly, but responded to the geopolitical tensions more than to the Fed's comments. In fact, the 10-year Treasury yield was actually down almost six basis points today, so that was a decently large drop in bond yields. That shouldn't have happened with hawkish Fed comments. And this could really be a change in sentiment. Look at this uh, article's title here. It says Dow futures are little changed after the index notches its worst day in more than a year. Wow. Yeah. If there was ever a switcheroo, it was definitely today. Now, again, what's very concerning as well, if you look at your defense companies like a Lockheed Martin and others, they really started to do well right before the market started to actually fall or right about when the market started to fall a lot. It didn't really line up to the Fed comments. And, you know, during the press secretary press conference, it LMT really started to move higher here. You only get LMT. Lockheed Martin and defense names moving higher if there's geopolitical tensions. Same is true with oil. Oil really started to go higher as the geopolitical tensions were mounting towards the end of the day today. And as the markets were falling again, that's another one of those easy just buy oil. You know, Middle East conflict, buy oil. That's that's kind of what happened today. Could also be seen as somewhat like a rush to safety. Gold was a little bit more uh, confusing today because gold is seen as another kind of rush to safety asset or flight to safety asset. And when the markets were starting to sell off, gold did very well. Gold was, was you know, having its, its highest point of the day and then out of nowhere started to curl downwards and really like fall quite a bit towards the end of the day. So I'm not exactly sure what happened here, but gold has been one of the better performing asset classes in 2024. So you, you've you been overdue for a pullback in gold, but I think it's safe to say when you see this kind of volatility in gold, it's never a good thing. One of the reasons why you may have seen the markets react so negative today based on this you know, uh, situation with Israel and Iran is because look at the Strait of Hormuz. This is an interactive uh, uh, image here from the New York Times that shows you just how much traffic and flow there is through the Strait of Hormuz. And guess, guess where it is? It's, it's right there by Iran. Like Iran back in the 70s, they cut this off before and basically the world stepped in to say you guys can't do that just because you're you know having problems with another country well if they do that now that would definitely cause some palpitations in the oil market and that would kind of eke into other areas of the economy as well and cause quite a bit of inflationary pressures basically overnight so there is a i guess a notional kind of nominal problem when you're talking about Iran and Israel potentially getting into a conflict because of the implications you could see for oil. With that said, we do have a big catalyst coming tomorrow morning. I don't know what the geopolitical tensions are going to do overnight. That could get worse and that could be a bigger problem for the markets. But I know for sure we're going to get some data coming out tomorrow with non-farm payrolls. They're expected to be 200,000 and the unemployment rate expected to come in at 3.9%. Here's the deal when it comes to non-farm payrolls and the unemployment rate. If you come in status quo, like right around expectations, 200,000 jobs, 
unemployment rate at 3.9%. That's the best case scenario. A non-farm payrolls number coming in 400,000, 300,000. That's a pretty bad scenario. Yes, it shows the economy is likely doing just fine, but the Fed's really not going to be cutting rates anytime soon. I don't think the markets would like a number that high. Same is true for the unemployment rate. If the unemployment rate falls, great news for the economy, bad news for the Fed and the Fed outlook on rate cuts. To the contrary, if you come in with 100,000 jobs or less, that's a big problem because the markets are going to say, oh, crap. Over the next coming months, you may actually start to go negative on your monthly job gains. That's good news for the Fed. The Fed would start to likely cut rates uh, sooner rather than later, but it would really bring up conversation about a recession. Same is true for the unemployment rate. If that goes up to 4% even, I don't think that's a huge problem. If it goes to 4.1 or 4.2%, which you can see big jumps in the unemployment rate sometimes, then that would be on the negative side. So too high, negative for any of these that both of these data reports two highs negative two lows negative you want to come in right around expectations tomorrow you will also get fed collins this speaks right as the data is coming out at 8 30 in the morning i'm sure they the fed officials already know what the data is going to be like so they're probably going to speak on that data and that's kind of why the markets paid a little bit more attention to what the fed said today because odds are they have a pretty good idea of what tomorrow's non-farms and unemployment rate is going to look like and based on what the fed said that would suggest a really strong number is coming tomorrow with that said we also have fed bark in that speaks at 9 15 in the morning tomorrow as well as the imf the international monetary fund slash world economic outlook so what they say can be interesting it doesn't always move the markets right uh but it it, it can i'm not going to say it won't it definitely can that comes out at 9 30 in the morning as well tomorrow fed bowman speaks at around noon and that is pretty much it you will get used car prices month over month and year over year uh that'll be coming out after 2 p.m i'm not exactly sure it doesn't have a time here but definitely want to watch that and the consumer credit change will be coming out at 3 p.m eastern standard time expecting about 15 billion dollars added to consumer debt We'll see where the number comes in. Last time this number came out uh, for January, it, it actually caused a negative reaction in the markets. Okay, now to the juicy part, I think, is the technicals. So on the NASDAQ, you're at a very important level. Your 50-day moving average on the NASDAQ is, or triple Qs, QQQ, is at 435.36. You are currently in after hours here at 435.49. So you're like 10 cents higher than your 50-day moving average. You actually closed under that in regular trading today. The little bounce that we've seen in after hours caused you to get back above this. If indeed the non-farm number is bad or the unemployment rate is bad and the markets sell off tomorrow, you're going to be in to some degree a no man's land where you really don't have any important levels of support. And your next level of support is down here at about 416 with the 100-day moving average. And that is what you could be setting yourselves up for if we have a bad market reaction to the data coming tomorrow. That would suggest from here, downside of about 4% or so, which doesn't sound like a lot, I guess. But based on just this market, we really haven't fallen recently in a while. That would be uh, quite, quite a move relative to what we have seen recently. And at this point, you've definitely created a downward uh, looking chart here for the NASDAQ, which those of you guys that like technicals doesn't look good. You've broken the uptrend and now in a downtrend on any different way you want to mark this chart. Everyone's got their own little touches and points they like to look at. I have had my chart drawn like this for a while and you've actually been under this for one, two, three, four, five trading days now. And it was really only a matter of time before we got a larger move lower. Now, typically when you get a large move lower like this, when you're up 1% and you flip a roo and you fall 1.5% by the end of the same day, 
that tends to lead into a larger kind of down movement. And for Tesla stock, I think I think it's more important now than ever you guys hear this, but I was talking about this a, a couple days back where if you actually go into a correction in the markets, Tesla stock has fallen so much, it's already corrected so much down over 30% just in 2024, you don't necessarily need to see a brutal sell-off in Tesla as well. Maybe Tesla is a little bit more insulated from a correction because it's already fallen so much. Personally, I would love to see Tesla stock fall more. I would love to see the stock go into the 150s, 140s, 130s or so, but I'm still not going to sit here and say that's likely going to happen, even if we go through a market correction. Sure, could we get some downside? Of course, but a big fall just doesn't look likely to me right now. If we are going to get a big fall, it will be after Tesla earnings. If it, if indeed Tesla is looking to cut prices again and not focusing on profitability as I expect they are, then you could be looking at larger downside for the stock. You can also see the sentiment shift quite a bit here on the SPY, the S&P 500. Currently, you have a sentiment reading on stock twits here of bearish at 30. And uh, just during the regular trading day, you were extremely bearish at 22. So you've definitely seen people start to flip flop from being super bullish on markets to being a little bit less bullish. And I think overall, you've you've been due for a correction for a while. And if there's ever a moment to start a correction, if the data comes out unfavorable tomorrow for markets, that's probably mixed with a hawkish fed mixed with geopolitical tensions i can't think of a better you know recipe for a correction in the markets with all of this said let me know your expectations for our markets and what you think happened today down below in the comment section hit the like button as well as subscribe to the channel if you guys want to come trade with us live in real time check out that link down below in the description of this video you guys have a fantastic rest of your day and i will see you in the next one